Okay, this video is going to be a demo video for the new program that I've created, uh, Skinimizer. Um, skinning takes a long time to do, and so that's uh, even classic skins takes a, a, a quite a long time to do, and there's a whole lot of features that can get frustrating. Um, manually adding little text files for colors and stuff like that, and it can get on your nerves if you haven't been doing it for a while. So I made Skinimizer, and uh, it uh, gets rid of a lot of those annoyances. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and install it. It's not really a large program. And uh, right away you can see uh, the locations of where your bitmaps are going to you know, hopefully be. Um, Skinimizer will not compile your scan until you've got everything done, including these mini mini browser and AVS. Now I might decide to let that slip in a, in a non-beta release, but if at the moment these old, I think these are uh, depreciated uh, features in WAMP, the mini browser windows and the AVS windows have been uh, removed, but uh, for sake of completeness, this ver current version really requires you to, you know, finish those aspects of Winamp, of your Winamp uh, classic skin. And it is a classic skin, it's not a modern skin, so, you know, it kind of makes sense. Anyways, so as you can see here, we have uh, bitmap applications, and we have a funny little scroll box here with a bunch of funny little squares in it, and these are uh, your, the way of telling Skinemizer what colors you're going to use for visualization. Visualization. Blech, I can't speak. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a visualization here. Uh, that right there. This little graphic display includes both uh, this uh, the bar graph and the uh, oscilloscope versions of the visualization. Your colors are selected here. And of course the background and the dots, you know, obvious. So, so anyways, so uh, and that's one aspect. And we have the EQ, of course. We so we have preview windows for each little aspect of uh, a WinApp Classic scan that are uh, that are uh, on the page, you know, relevant to the bitmaps you're working with. And uh, so you can see, and includes uh, the different modes and what buttons you might have pressed. Of course, you don't see anything in there because I got nothing loaded. But you will. Jan. Now these, like I said, are, are required by this version. And, and I think this is required for a complete scan. Uh, we have a regions editor, which you'll probably find interesting. And of course, you have a, an ability to import cursors. You read me file. And any extra files you want to include, include them in here, like a font like a font, you know, a font file that maybe your scan will use but does not universally installed on, on Windows machines, you know, I believe like the Pixel 1 scan has a, its own, you know, comes with a font file that you have to extract from the uh, from the uh, zip archive, from the uh, scan archive and uh, install on your system. So, anyways, let me see, was this anything else? Am I forgetting something? I don't think so. Alright, so, we're going to start with, uh, I'm going to start demoing with uh, my last skin that I made, completed, the uh, bug prog skin, which is what is featured in the, uh, in the about box here, and it's uh, in the uh, applications icon. And uh, so, and I have actually extracted it out, the actual skin that I finished, compiled, into the individual, uh, to the individual files that are normally found inside a uh, classic skin uh, archive. So it's just easier to demo this with. So I'm going to start with, uh, the, of course, the main window here. And uh, what I'm going to do, let me see, main. Main is just one image. And so I can probably go in here and just select the file not much target. So I can do this one of two ways. I can either double click the the window, but it's not labeled, so you, you, the first time user you won't know, okay, well this is the main skin, or well, the main the main background of, of the main window. So you might want to go over here and go 
import image. So you get a new window that pops up for importing an image, and you got to select the image you want. Aha, see, there's main. And of course, the targeting rectangle will, you know, so resize itself to the expected size parameters of the uh, of the target uh, image. So I'm going to go ahead and import it as a file. And I'll select main. It's the easiest part right now. And as you can see, it uh, lined it up zero for zero. And uh, you can see a magnified version of it here. So as you can see, it's all lined up and centered in and all nice and pretty. And of course, it's the right size because that's the original scan. So, so we hit set. Now here's a problem. We didn't uh, select a a a, um, a project folder, which is what we need to do the first time before you run it. So we need to make a project folder. So I'm gonna make a new project folder here. And uh, so we go my documents. So I'm making a project folder. Now of course we'll just label it. All right, so now we have saved our first little bitty bitty bitmap for our new scan. And what this does is it saves the project file, which contains actually quite a bit of information about your scan and the individual bitmap that we just imported. And now that we've imported our first bitmap, it has displayed what it, what when Apple normally displays. So you can see the top part is cut off because it, uh, the program only will render the bitmaps that it needs to render, um, you know, to save processing time and whatever, whatnot. And in fact, it, it lets you know that you haven't finished your scan. Um, and so we'll see here if I try to compile my scan, it will not let you, and it'll tell you what it is that you're missing, what sections, which tabs you have that are missing. So the thing to do actually is to actually start with one of the classic one of the uh, the template scans like the scanner atlas scan or template app. That way you can compile your scan and preview it in WinApp without having to you know make your entire scan first. So we'll go ahead and we'll clear this project and we will import a WinApp scan. And I'm going to use template amp and you can skins can either be a folder or the compiled file. Uh, the Skinner Atlas that I had done was just a folder, uh, but you can import any skin actually. But I'm going to, since we're for demonstration purposes, I want to import the Skinner Atlas skin. So you can see it imported the entire skin. Huh. That's incomplete. You need to do an ISO version. So now we're uh, going to replace that real quick. Uh, clipboard. So you can you can import from a clipboard. This means you don't have to mess with files all the time. See, so whatever image rendering program you're using to you know to create and polish your skin in. If, you, if it has the ability to copy, you can copy and paste it directly into Skinemizer. Alright, so we save our project. It's taking a while because there's so many little bitmaps that's going on here. And so you have all these little files already. Because we're starting with our base skin here. Um, the scanner atlas scan which included a bunch of its own cursors already and I'm quite surprised it didn't save I'm just not seeing it oh, some of the text files, okay so they're there All right. So let's re-import that file main bmp set and it'll automatically overwrite the old file.
So that was Maine. So let's go find Maine. Just to show you what it's doing. If, if, you, see, if you see, it didn't ask you to save it. It just saved it for you. And you can prevent it from doing that if you want, although I don't recommend it, but you can by un unselecting auto file name. So it'll ask you for, uh, not only it'll ask you to, to confirm to save it first, it'll ask you for a file name. But uh, with that on, it just assumes the uh, file name that it's used internally for referencing these all these little bitmaps. So, so now we have our main, and I'm going to show you the next part. And yeah, I'm going to use what I'm going to do first. Uh, it doesn't matter with this, but it might make sense. Okay, so I'm going to start with C buttons here. All right, so C buttons. Alright, C buttons. Alright, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select all, and I'm going to copy. All of it. So it, with Skinemizer, it doesn't matter what you have your image in. Because of the handy dandy targeter. So these are the C buttons areas. And the reason why you, you the other reason why you want to use uh, import one of the template app skin template skins is so that you can see what is what you know and the and the Skinner Atlas skin is is, is invaluable for that so you can see we got, we have the reverse play pause stop you know all the good little stuff here so so I'll double click on it and this time we're going to do clipboard and so it brings the entire skin or the entire bitmap that you put into into the clipboard in and you can see a preview of what you have originally targeted it'll show you the uh, the name the internal name of the bitmap image and since it's uh, right on it the first one is the right one right it should be the right one yeah so previous C button normal so that's the unpressed that's normal Alright, so we'll, and you can, if your mouse is too slow or too fast and you need precision targeting, well, you can come in and you can use this four square little arrangement of four buttons to, to move your targeting. And you can see a target move. And you can, if you, if you know the num references by number, likely you won't, but in case you do, you can verify it with a little status saying, you know, this is where I'm starting to, on the top right hand corner, top left hand, excuse me, top left hand corner, and it's this, so this is the coordinate, and then this is the uh, the width and height of what it's currently targeting. But this is fairly simple here. We go. Since it's the original C buttons, that's fairly easy, so we'll set it. And as you can see, the preview's already set it. So we don't have to worry about, you know, and the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about creating the file, the little image file. It puts it in the right place for you. So we do the same thing here. Clipboard. And we do the play. And I think that's how that's lined up. Yep. Set it. And then instead of instead of going back and forth all the time, although I mean you might want to do that when you first start to use this program or if you're this is if you're first doing a scan, you might want to go you know, back and forth all the time, close it out and select a new bitmap, close it out, select a new bitmap. That way you get familiar with it. But if you're not in the mood to do that, you can just go to the next one here. So with the pause C button normal. So that's that one right here. So we'd have to go back and forth all the time. And we'll just slide our target over. And hit set. Easy. The stop button. Set. Previous C button pressed. Now be careful. Don't assume that uh, it's going to go to the next button. So, so I'm going to go here first. Set, play C button pressed, oops, set, pause button, set, oops, dummy,
set and then go to the pause. Set and then go stop. Set. Now if you look, it actively changes to what the program is expecting. So you can see the normally the other buttons are twenty three by eighteen. The next button is actually twenty two by eighteen. So and here's the next button. Normal. So I just cut myself. Set. C button pressed. Set. Eject button. It's not really the eject button, I think it's the open file button, but it looks like an eject, so that's what I called it. It's normal, so we set. And then C button pressed. Set. So now our C buttons are done. Of course they were already done, but you know. We don't have to save it, but it's a good idea to save it anyway, just in case. Alright, so now to demonstrate the, uh, the, uh, the colors here. Now, I don't remember if I have my original image that I used to import the spectrum colors with. I doubt it. think I do. Where'd that one go? So I'll just make one up for this demonstration video. Alright, so I'm going to do the viz colors. I'm going to do them all in one WAP. I'm going to do it without headaches. Without, you know, selecting each one and going, ooh, I want that color, and then ooh, I want that color. So we're going to do it the easy way here. Viz spectra from image. So what it's, it's doing is it's, it's expecting a 1 by 16 bitmap. 1 by 16 pixels. And of course, the top will correspond to the top here, and the bottom pixel will correspond to the bottom. So we're just going to make one. It's not the original. So I'm going to go new. Let's do it just for easy. Where'd it go? Here it is. No, oh, okay, it's already set, so I don't have to reselect it. Right? So I'm using a going to use a rainbow here for the viz spectra. That's not the, what the original scan called for, but you know, just for demonstration first. So I'm gonna resize it to one by sixteen. Edit, copy, and then clipboard it in. So when I hit set on it, bingo. It imported all those in. So all I gotta do is this, this is the background. So maybe I think it was this one. I think the dots was I don't remember what the dots were. I'll just guess. So I'll just go gray on these for now. There's only five of these, so I figured it wouldn't be worth the time for the oscilloscope, you know. And then viz peaks, I think I hit white. So now we have our viz complete. We have to save these. So you, when you save, when you do, you know, these colors here, you get to save it because it, it's in, these actually get stored not in an individual file, but they get stored with the project settings file. And I'll show you that here real quick. And the project settings file is really nothing more than a, like a an, an INI file. 
just with a different file extension. So you can see it saves, it records the, the names of the bitmaps that you saved them as. And then in a different section, it'll do the viz section here. Scroll, scroll, scroll. It's a lot of same bitmaps. Damn. <laughs> Alright, see, so Gen EX Colors. Okay, that's from the others. That's from the skin we imported. Viz Colors. So you can see it stores the, uh, the viz colors in the project file. And if you don't save it, it won't be saved. So. Alright. Let me see if there's anything else I can demo on this before I'm moving on. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's the same thing same concept here. Select um, select the appropriate color for the, the section and it'll update it, you know, on the fly. So I believe that's mostly for playlist, yes. Yeah. So, okay, so non-current item text, it's, it's these here. And it'll show you. So I'm going to change it to white just to see. Just so you can see it. Demo it. White. Blue. Selected item. Mm, that's interesting. And you can see... You can see what the effect changes have in the different button mode. I don't know what you call these little menu menus that pop up when you hit the buttons down here on the uh, on the real one app. Okay. Now Jen is a special breed. That's right, I need to tell you this. You need to do these texts. And I'll show you why. If you don't do the texts, you won't know what your finished skin is going to look like until you actually export it, and of course it won't compile. So you can see, you need to do these texts because wherever I can, even if there's an option not to in my program, I use these these texts, these bitmaps for the for the displaying of the text, and that's on purpose so that you know what it looks like if a user does decide to use this skin font instead of you know the one of the built-in ones in the operating system that the WinApp can use to render whatever it is it's trying to display. And so I'm going to generate the text. Now you can either import it or you can generate it. If you import it, the program gives you the sequence that you can even copy and paste directly into whatever whatever uh, image editing program for use in the importing. But you got to make sure that you do it right. And when you go to import it, of course, it's kind of targeting it. it lets you know what its width and height it's going to be. But for simplicity, I'm just going to select a font. Tahoma? Well, Tahoma. And Tahoma's not the scan original, but I'm just going to set it for. So I'm going to set the original. Let's see, what is that? Was it dark blue on that? That I originally had? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. And then you have to set the font color too. Oop. Dummy. Does it look right? Does it? Generate text. Font. Okay, color, I set it, okay. Oh, change the font in here. All right, so I'm gonna use silver, whatever that means. All right, so that's too big. And you can actually adjust where the, pr where the program renders it, although you would want to choose a font where you don't have to do that, but you can make small, I keep hitting set make small adjustments when you need to. So I'm going to change the font size to what it was before, five. And you, oh, okay, so, and you can see that adjustment might be necessary for using this font. I just don't want to cut off the tops of any other, see, it's going to cut off the tops. Oh, it looks like it might work. 
I say, see, it kind of works. Alternatively, you can use the same font layout as the WinApp Base Classic Scan and WinApp, use WinApp font. So you get the same effect as the original Classic Scan in case you, you get tired of messing with trying to figure out the, what font you used. So that's what I'm going to do here. Boom. Alright, so, and you can see you don't have to import how many bitmaps are there for this text? Like a zillion? <laughs> no, thank you. So I made that. And the same thing you should do, you, you, that I did here with the spectrum colors, you can do with the EQ colors. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that, even though I don't need to. EQ spectra from image. As you can see, of course, you can't select anything else. So this is 1 by 19. So there's more colors to, to work with on the EQ spectra than there is on the viz spectra. So I would go ahead and... Oh, where do you go? It was so small, I couldn't see it. Okay. Edit. Undo resize. So I'm going to resize it to 1 by 19. Edit. Copy. Clipboard. Set. Save project. As you can see, this won't change. That's just the way, you know, one of the settings that I had to demonstrate, you know, the tops and the bottoms. And, uh, so, but you can't change it, you can't really move these, not in this preview. And the reason for that is, is uh, it takes a bit of power, computing power, that, or a special code that I don't know what it is, that they usually generate that on the fly. So to save processor time, I just, you know, static draw. Alright, so. <laughs> Is there anything that I missed that are sp the special features of this program? It probably is something that I missed. What was I used on the other one? Oh, it doesn't matter. That's a funky font. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so here's another feature when you're making your titles you can use if you import your your gen your gen bitmaps first or if you create them or you import them you can you know just create the uh, active and inactive versions of those of those um of those images for you to be able to place inside your uh your uh, your skin files however i recommend against it and the reason why is because this is not current and uh, kerning is when you have, uh, well, you probably know this if you're making a skin, but if you don't know it, kerning is where, say, for example, you have an A and a W, where the top of the W on the left-hand side can go over the bottom of the bottom part of the A so that the letters all are tight inside, and in, some, it, and in certain fonts it makes it actually easier to read. Whereas with this non-kerned, I think is it called kerning? Uh, it might be wrong. Well, anyways, with this, it's all blocked out and it has a fixed width, and so you can't change it, and, you, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look right as far as the way the the original font designer designed it to look like with the, with the correct kerning. So I would recommend against using this. But if you must, you can. I put it in here. So, for example, if I'm making a skin, I'm working on the EQ, I can say, okay, e oh, spell right, equalizer, and then I can copy either the selected or the inactive, or both of them, and then integrate them into the, into the, uh, the title of the, uh, the bitmap that you're importing or whatever program you're using to create your bitmap files with. So that's there. I rec don't recommend it, but it's there if you want to use it. Alright, so... Uh, this is going to be the tricky part. Gen text sequence import. Read this, please. It is important. 
The variable with images are color delimited, blah 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 blah. First comma pixels, blah blah blah. One pixel separator, blah 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 blah, at least. Alright, so what that is getting at is that when you go to import your images for your Gen EX, for the generic window titles, it needs to look something like. Is that in Gen or Gen EX? I think it's in Gen. That. At least. a one pixel width separator between each letter at least a one pixel separator be um, before the first letter so this has to be one pixel wide or greater width and I'll demonstrate that visually so one pixel greater or wider from the edge that you're going to import this impact uh, um, image as and it has to be one inch or I mean one pixel or wider here so you can be like this you can be like this but you can't be like this or here you can't be like this that's not gonna work it has to be at least one pixel between the two before you import so you the, the idea here is you've made this inside your you made all these images inside your your your, your favorite image editing program and now you're ready to import it so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this for demonstration purposes copy uh, here we go we hit OK clipboard and as you see we do have to target this so and this is variable there's not everything in this you can't do this with just any image, it, and the program has to know that it it needs to be variable. For example, the uh, the uh, the EQ buttons is it the EQ? No, the EQ buttons are not variable. The uh, the volume and the pos position bar and the uh, balance the balance control are resizable of a sort, not always. All right, so now I have it targeted just right. You can have, you know, you can be like that. It doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to set. And it has flawlessly integrated and imported these variable width bitmaps into your new project skin. File, save. Okay, and the same concept here. We can click on it if you want to you click on it here so let's say I want to change the this view header background so that's uh, number eight here so we find eight there's eight and we change it to let's do that one and uh, so there you go and list view text color so let's make it blue I mean white so you see it here's white so, so same concept here menu browser simple enough now the reason why this is here as, as the same thing is here is because these settings for the playlist editor, editor actually affect this including the ones that are explicitly said menu browser set but some of these do affect this um, so that's why I've replicated it here so that way you can make adjustments here to see it visually and let's, uh, let me see okay and the same here this does have an effect on what's displayed most mostly here. Okay, now for the really f interesting part: regions. This, this doesn't make your head spin off. I don't know what will. Regions uh, allow a skin developer to do a non, what do they call it? Faded, non-faded, you know, region of the skin of the of the window that will not show up. You know, that the user can actually click through, physically click through. And I'll demonstrate that. So a region is, the regions can be multiple. You can have more than one region, and it contains a series of points. So a region contains at least three points, because if you've only got two points, you got a line. So that's not going to work. So you got to have at least three points. Otherwise, regions don't work. 
So of course you won't see anything until you get at least three points that are, you know, distant from each other. So I'm gonna add a region here, so I got one region with no points. Useless. But you know. So it's insert it and it's add a point. So we got a point here. Of course nothing's happening because you only got less than three points. So we could you could position this anywhere you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off the title on this demo. So I'm gonna add another point. And you, and as you can see here, you can go back and select the point so that they're the same height and the same position vertically. So 13 and 13. It's probably in inaccurate, but it's just a demo video, so it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna add a point. Now we have more than one no more than two points. We got three points now, so now you see the effect that adding these regions has on your skin. So if you save this now, this is what your users are going to see, which means they won't be able to click any of the buttons here. They'll click through one app and say, so yeah, you know, kind of pointless. So, but you can do it if you want to. I recommend against it. But yeah. So now I have I have a skin that has a region set. I got a little bit of the. Uh, title still in there so I'm going to go down just a little bit I don't want I want 14 here we go and same thing over here 14 alright now you can actually also move an entire region of points around as well so as you can see this portion that's got this little checker pattern in here will not of course show up and if you unselect it it'll only show even though the region has its definition of points up out of side the region of the window itself it will not show up so you're not going to see anything new in WinApp or anything like that so so but I'm going to move the region back here and one of the good things about having this magnifier here is that there's no magnifier on this window and there's a reason for that it takes too much processing time to render all those regions simultaneously over and over again. So the magnifier here just really helps. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here. Ooh, I need to make it so I can see it. Huh. Now we can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and look at to find the edge here. Come on. Quit screwing. Okay, there we go. Alright, so. Are we back at our original points? Yes. Okay, so. You cannot move a point, an, indi an individual point, outside the region of the scan, but you can move a region outside the region of the scan. Yeah, whatever. It's just the way the program is set up. That you got, you had to disallow it, otherwise it would you know, be crashing. Don't ask why. Okay. So, uh, and then you can have another region. So I'm going to add a region, I'm going to put a hole in the middle of WinApp here. And the way you do that is you take, see these points run clockwise. So I got here, and then here, and then, and then here, and then here. So they go clockwise like this in the order that, they, that they've put them in. If you put another region with a series of points that go the other way around, it cancels the first region that is underneath it. So I'm going to add points going the other way around. I'm going to do it around, what am I going to do it around? I'm going to do it around this little kilohertz thing. So I'm going to have a, a hole in WinApp. So add a point. And of course, since you only got two, you're not going to see anything. Add a point. Now we're getting somewhere. And as you can see, the editor is showing you where you won't be able to see that portion of WinApp. See now I have blocked out the uh, what do you call that? I forgot what I remember what it is. I can't see it so I can't remember. Alright so <laughs> it is blocked out that portion of the window. So if I select nothing it'll show you this is actually this background right here. So if you compile the skin and you and you open you know, and you select it inside WinApp, if when a user clicks this, they're gonna click right through WinApp and it's gonna and it's gonna show whatever's behind WinApp, you know, at that hole. So 
I think I'm going to do a little distance so it's a bit more square. I need to go down and over one. Ah. I'm not going to screw with it too long if it takes too long. Let's see, let's see what that's 181. You can see here, 181 by 50, okay, let me flick on it right. Oh, you got it right. Okay, so it's not perfectly square and covering up that whatever that was behind it. All right, so we have to hit set. Don't forget to hit set, because if you don't hit set, if you just hit close, it won't save it. So now we're set. So you can see the, a kind of a preview of these black areas are where it's not going to show, and this white area is where Winamp will show. All right, so, and you can see it here. Bing. See, the, the title is block out. Is, is not showing in the little squared hole that we got here is also not showing so now for the cursors cursors drag and drop it's as simple as drag and drop so I've already got my cursor saved so I'm over here so I'll just to show you see when we do the first one here main window except title so it's just a normal cursor so I see which one is normal one that one is normal What's normal? Define normal. Okay. As you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, on my screen I can see a that very cursor as my cursor. So when you move your mouse over the, the, the actual cursor image that you've imported into a Skinemizer, you will see that your cursor has changed to uh, what you have imported in for that square. So for animated cursors, you'll be able to see it. Why? Is it not showing a different background for? Do I not have colors set for? No, all the colors are set. I imported a skin. Oh, that's odd. Oh, whatever. All right, so if you want a clear skin, you can right-click on it, and I mean clear skin, clear a cursor. You can right-click on it and clear it. And if you want to export it, say you imported a skin and you want to export it, you can export it out of the skin out of the skin file. Well, you can just import it directly. You can right click and go whatever. Yeah, so you can do it by file, you can do it by drag and drop. I don't know if the clipboard, the Windows clipboard supports copy and paste of the of skin crushers. I'm not sure it it's compatible with all versions of Windows, so if you don't have there's no copy and paste into it for cursors. It's just ridiculous. Okay. You just import the stupid file. Okay. So and then read me. So I'll just go ahead and Delete the original readme and put my readme in there. Just for demo purposes. And then, of course, save your skin project. Extra files. You don't need all these extra files. Remove. 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 So did I show place editor file? So I done that one already. So what else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Extra files. Add remove cursor. Da -da 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 generate text. So we did that. Did that. Respecter. We did that. Import. That's done. Compile skin. All right, so let's say, for the sake of you know demos, we have finished our skin. We've got all the little bitmaps imported, so we're going to compile our skin now. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to find my program files. Come on. One more one app. Skins. I'm gonna leave it. So now the skin is compiled. 
let's run, run one up and see how we've butchered things, huh? Skins, bug pro demo. Oh, it's hideous. <laughs> but it's working. Alright, so. And as you can see, I can't click out right there. It's empty. And you can see, I can't click there either. It is empty. I am actually clicking on the desktop. There's a hole in Winamp. So, I'm going to see if I can uh, make that effect exaggerated here. There is a hole in Winamp. So, effective regions editor too. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I'm, it doesn't seem like I am at the moment. Oh, so let's just see that you can see the finished product here. Import. I'm gonna import the my uh, my skin here. Let's see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Got the windshades. Here, windshade, ISO, and then windshade. Playlist. Add. Oop. So that's a uh, Pog skinimizer. All right, please uh, give me feedback on the Winamp forums. Um, uh, this particular thread, where I first posted notice of my release, um, well, the title of the thread just says skinimizer. If whatever comes up. taking forever. Well, you'll you'll find it. Anyways, all right. Have a good one.